concept of a buffer seem to have given some people some trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw coordinates for titration. We'll have base uh, hydroxide ion on the x-axis and of course on the y-axis we have pH. So there was uh, a couple of things, a few things, people were confused about. PK, okay, and how it relates to, uh, to pH. Also PI, what that means. Uh, how the, the amine should be a 3 plus, and the carboxyl groups, how they ionize under different pH conditions. So, we'll begin by um, demonstrating on this titration curve how the hydrogen ion concentration, which essentially is what pH is, how it changes as we increase the hydroxide ion concentration in the presence of a compound like an amino acid. I like to draw it beginning with the alpha carbon, uh, the R group, and the alpha carboxyl and alpha amine. So this is what alanine, simple amino acid. It has two groups that can lose a proton, only two, the amine and the carboxylic acid group here, carboxylic acid and the amine group. Each of these is susceptible to uh, loss of this proton, okay, and loss of these protons, but not the uh, alpha hydrogen if you will, and certainly none of the hydrogens around the methyl group. So if we titrate these, and we begin at a very low pH, pH of let's say 1, and 0 down here, and remember we're in solution, so this titration curve is describing what's going on inside a beaker or a test tube of an aqueous solution that contains the alanine. As we add the base, of course, you know pH is going to go up. Well, in the presence of this amino acid, pH is going to stop going up, essentially. When it reaches a pH of 2.2, now it stopped going up because we're at a point now where I'll represent this carboxyl group down here. The carboxylic acid now can lose a proton and form the carboxylate, the negative charge. And this is an equilibrium equal concentrations at this point here, at the pK. And so this is your acid, and we represent that as usually as HA for any molecule, is in equilibrium with the conjugate base, which is essentially the base of the acid. That's why it's referred to as conjugate. Now if we continue to add base, to this solution here. And this is kind of like a titration. You all have had the titration. Uh, as we continue to do that, the pH will begin to go up again. And it's because we have gone beyond the equilibrium of the acid and conjugate base. Now we're all, it's all in the form of this conjugate base. And once we get to a point where the 
weak acid is in equilibrium with the conjugate base again oh, sorry this is a negative it's this point that we reach 9.4 which is the pk of the amine terms of the n terms and so NH3 plus is in equilibrium now with N H2. And since we lost the proton, we no longer have a charge. Charge is zero, essentially. And if we continue to add base, we will go beyond that equilibrium until we reach the maximum concentration of uh, hydroxide ion in an aqueous solution, which is 10 to the minus 14. Okay? So when we're in equilibrium between the weak acid and its conjugate base, we're at the pK. So this is the pK for the amine. And this, 2.2, is the pK for the carboxyl, carboxylic acid or carboxylate. Now, this point here in the center is significant because it's this point that we are actually in equilibrium between the conjugate base oops, of the amine and we're in equilibrium uh, with the weak acid or the actually fairly strong acid but uh, of, the, of the carboxyl group because at this point, because remember this is all in solution so we're talking about titrating through a point here and at this point we will have equal amounts of this and equal amounts of this. We also have equal amounts of the NH uh, three plus, which is also considered a weak acid, and we are also in equilibrium with this. Oh, oh. is also considered the conjugate base. So when these are all equal at this point here, we have a neutralization. We have positive on the left side and negative on the right side. These two are neutral. This gives an overall net charge equal to zero. And if the net charge is zero, water will not solvate the molecule. It won't surround the molecule. Remember we talked about solvation or hydration in the, f in the case of water. So when the molecules are have a net charge of zero, you can't do this. So if you can't do this, then the molecules will not be soluble in water. And so the PI, which is at this point here, is referred to as the isoelectric point. Iso meaning same. And the protein, the amino acid, the polypeptide, will precipitate, will come out of solution. And uh, so we have to, we use this actually to isolate proteins. We use a PI value. Solubility above and below the PI uh, will be the greatest and the PI will be the least if, if it's at all soluble. 